CNC, or computer numerically controlled machines, are becoming more and more mainstream, but that doesn't mean they're cheap. You can buy a CNC router for about $1,000 and 3D printers for about $300. But machines at these prices will be very cheaply made and have their issues, especially the routers, since rigidity and accuracy are vital to their operation. All of this is true, but I can't say the router I built is more accurate or rigid or has less issues. But I can say I know far more about CNC machines after building it than buying one would have taught me. The machine is a gantry style, which means the table moves in the Y direction and the head moves in the X and Z directions. This is different from most manual mills, but common in routers because it is easier to make and can be made more rigid. I designed this machine in Fusion 360. My design uses 1 inch square tubing for the majority of the frame, but also uses 3 8 by 4 inch flat stock and 24 inches of 2 by 4 tubing. To start, I began welding the frame. This is what the rest of the machine will be built on, so if it is not square or wrong in some way, it will make the rest of the project more difficult. I went slowly and continually checked that it was square and flat. With the bottom of the machine assembled with cross braces, I mounted it on my manual mill and set up to drill and tap holes for the linear rails. The linear rails I bought from an eBay seller and they work a lot like a ball bearing where bowls roll on hardened steel. Once the holes were tapped, I mounted the rails and checked to see if they are parallel because if they were off, once I mounted the table, the rails would jam. Once I got the rails parallel, I moved on to the x-axis, which is made with the 2x4 tubing. I designed this with the tubing so I could run the ball screw through the tubing and have it protected. Because the ball screw will be in the tube, I needed a gap to attach the screw to the subplate for the z-axis. Once again, I set up my mill to cut out the slot with a 3 8 end mill. I also drilled the holes for the linear rails on the tubing. Once I finished, I once again adjusted the rails to be parallel. At this point, it was mostly making different mounting plates, like these that I welded to the ends of the 2x4 tubing, which the x-axis ball screw mounts to, and the uprights attached to. There are also two plates for the z-axis, one that mounts to the x-axis rails and has the z-axis rails and the ball screw on the other side. The second mounts to the z-axis rails and has the spindle mounted to it. There are also brackets for the stepper motors and spacers to mount the table. I welded the uprights to the frame but attached the x-axis tube to them with screws because I wanted to be able to adjust it later. At this point you can really see what it looks like but I knew if I didn't take it apart immediately and paint it I never would do it. So once the paint dried I reassembled it and began on the electronics. This was by far the hardest part for me because I don't know much about circuitry. I did some research and tried to get it running with this parallel port breakout board that came with my stepper motors, but I couldn't get it talking to Mach 3 with any of the wiring diagrams online. Mach 3 is a program that reads G code from the CAM software and then communicates with the controller board which connects to the motors. I believe that using this USB to parallel port adapter was the issue, but I have no proof of that. Either way, I bought this USB control card that came with a manual and wired it up. After some difficulty finding the right drivers for Mach 3, I got it working. So I still have a lot to learn about CNC machining and using Mach 3 and CAM, but once the controller and motors are wired correctly, it really wasn't that difficult to get it working. I'm still learning the machine, seeing what speeds and feeds work and what its limits are, but it's a lot of fun to see something move in two or three axes simultaneously. Like this part where I made a fillet with a ball end mill instead of using a quarter rounder. One of the best examples of it is engraving text. I got the engraving to work on aluminum and wood, but only with large letters. I think buying a tool made for engraving would help, but I don't trust the machine or myself enough yet to put an expensive tool on it.
This is one of the harder projects I've done, but I really enjoyed it and will be continuing to learn more about CNC machining. So yes, it was hard, but I don't want to scare anyone off from doing this project because it was a lot of fun and will teach you more than many small, easy projects would. So if you have access to a machine shop and some skills in machining, I would strongly recommend this project. You can follow my design or you can design your own. With eBay and the internet, there aren't any bounds to how the machine should look or work. This is really fun and I hope it inspires one of you to try it. So like, comment, subscribe, and have a nice day.